G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video where I like to teach you how to paint. Did you see the painting in the opening credits there? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you how to paint in this video today. And it's quite an achievable painting when you know what to do. Uh, if you're a beginner and you feel, ah, oh, I can't do that, you can, but you just gotta realize you gotta practice everything first, then you can follow on and you can do it. There's the size of the canvas that I'm using today. And I will also get some colors going up the screen as well. That way you can write them down and use the same colors as me or use something very similar, okay? All right, so what I'll do is I'll bring you over to the palette and the easel and we'll get right into it. Now my palette here, I've just got craft white, nothing else but craft white. I'm gonna put that on my beautiful putter on a brush and I wanna prime my canvas just with this so my colors will move and blend together easily. And because I'm not using any retarder, I'll give it a light mist of water, just a light spray of water on there, just so this will go across it a lot easier because when there's no water, it can be draggy and wanting and dry. So I want to get this painted over the whole canvas. So I'm just going to put it on with me, put it on a brush. Even if I have to shovel it up like this, this is... I always use a lot of this paint, but getting it right onto your canvas. See, I just shovel it on and I'm pushing it on with the whole brush everywhere, getting it on, crisscross it. It's all over the place. It's very lumpy and bumpy, but don't worry about that because then we just go to the tip of this putter on a brush and we just simply stroke it left and right and to turn it into a nice even film of thin paint on our canvas. Now I'm painting on canvas cloth a good quality artist quality canvas cloth. You will get very different and not as good quality if you're painting on paper or canvas paper, okay? Okay, the next color I'm gonna to introduce to the canvas is some red gold. It's a, um, it's like a deep orange. I've cleaned my putter on a brush and I wanna load this up to the tips of it like that. And this is going to have a horizon area about there, okay? Why I say area, because it's not going to be a sharp line, it's just going to be misty. All right, so we want to get this pretty much from the top, blocked in from the top, get it all in there, and then crisscross it and bring that down to the horizon area, okay? We've got it to the horizon area. I'm going to crisscross it off the tape here as well, that way I'm not going to pull un blended paint back into the painting. I've learned that so many times by mistakes and you would have seen it in my previous videos. All right, so now I'll stroke that left and right like this. I'm gonna get a bit of white at the top of that, just picking up some of the craft white, because I want the top lighter than the, the horizon area. There we go, I'm picking up some more just to get the top a lot lighter than the horizon area. Now I'll pick up some more of the red gold just to get that horizon area a little bit darker. There we go. And I will just finish the brush off down the bottom half because that's going to be darker water area there. So I'll get that crisscrossed in and finish it off with left and right strokes like that. Now I've just wiped my brush and I've got some um, burnt umber and I want to lighten this now to a lighter value and what's on the board is going to change it as well. And I want to come from say like the horizon area and bring this down to the bottom. And my horizon area is like again here. So what I'm going to do is I'll bring it from the bottom and bring it up so we don't get a hard line in the horizon area. So we're Mixing this with that red gold all the way to the horizon area to there, there we go there and now I want to fade that into the orange get it down here a bit more now that can go a bit darker so I'll just keep making it the depth I want and you watching this video the darkness I want that's the darkness you need I've just grabbed some more and I'll start at the bottom again, get it darker. Now you can even probably use just here the, the straight 
burnt umber without the white mixed in it because what's on the board is already lightening it up as well. I want to get something, uh, there we go. I'll get, there we go. I've done that. Now I'll go to the tip of the brush and I'll just water fire that left and right. There we go. Careful not to get anything dark there. Right oh. Just wipe that brush, grabbing some burnt umber on the edge of it there. And we can stamp in some darker values where you feel you might want some. And I'm, I don't know, I might put some, let's say here. Just stamp it on. In a lay down pattern like this. This is just where I want some darker values. So I can control where I want these darker values. Look, I want a little bit over here, let's say. About there. Simply wipe your brush and gently waterfy that with the tip of your putter on a brush. Just right across the painting, don't stop halfway. And we've just got some easy controlled darker areas on top of the water. Now if you have a look, you can start to see that water's looking a bit like that with dimension. That's what we're after and that's how you can do it. Okay, I've got a pouncer here, the size I want of my glaring sun. I've got titanium white, okay. I've got a softer body titanium white. It's not craft paint, but it's the same consistency. And I want to put a nice glare where I want the sun to be with this, and this can help make that happen. Pretty much to this side here, I want it right there. I'm going to just stamp it on. There we go, look at that. So I'm going to stamp that around until I get my glaring area, which is about there. There's my glare. Right there, it's mixing with that orange. Now I'm going to wipe that. Now I'm picking up the Indian yellow on that pouncer there. And I want to now Indian yellow that white that I just glared on the canvas. So we're going to stamp that now and the Indian yellow is going to come through. The white, not the white, the sky colour, is still wet and blendable. So I'm going to get that to, where do I want me glare about here? The white that I put on first allows this yellow to be more opaque and seeable. So I'm going to come around and get a nice soft edge on that glare. See what I'm doing with the pouncer? Just grabbing another pouncer to save me cleaning that one. And I want to now put the white glare within the sun. So my sun's about here, but that's too small for my sun. My sun's got to be bigger than that, so I'm going to... I might have to play with this a few times, get this white the way I want it, the size I want. So I'm stamping it on pretty much the size that I want, and it's going to slowly fade into that yellow as well. I'll gradually get it whiter and brighter in the middle. So now I'm going to grade this into that yellow with the edge of the pouncer. See what I've done there? It's up to you how arty and carry on you want to get with it all. Okay, now I'm getting some more white again and right in the middle of that where I want my sun, my sun's here, right there. I want to get that the size I want, nice and white. Now I'm going to try and get rid of those stampy bubbles that the pouncer's making just by manipulating it and playing with it. But that's about the diameter I want of my white and the edge of this can be a bit more harsher than that edge and that edge. Okay now just because I want to, I'm getting a blending brush and I'm stamping just trying to soften that yellow edge back into this red gold just to make it not so harsh. So I'm just gently manipulating that until I'm happy with the finish. Like there we go and over this side. So it's softened that edge where that yellow is meeting the red gold. It's not so harsh, because I really want that soft and blended and faded into it. If you get it done first time with your pouncer, hat's off to you. But if you're like me and you didn't quite do it, buy yourself a hat, stamp it down with your blending brush, and then you can take your own hat off. There we go, how's that? I'm happy with that. That's looking quite arty.
Now that brush that I just used, it's got the red gold sort of orange on it. I've got some red gold here and I want to pick that up on the tip of me brush here. I'm just using my blending brush, okay? And I want to get some colour of the sun in the water. So I'll just open the edges up like that first before I hit the canvas. And then there's me sun. I'm about here. I'll do a line down there. And this has got to radiate now. So you can probably put white. See how that looks very translucent? If we just, this brush, open that up into some white first, it'll kind of undercoat what you've just done. Get that blob off the edge of it there. Do that again. You watch, it'll be more opaque now, which is what you want. There we go. Now the orange will sit on that more opaque, whiter orange value there because it's acting like a primer. Okay, so we'll do that. And we'll get our red gold back on there. So I've just stamped it back on there, and we're going to, let's see, there we go, we want, we want to see visually some red gold sitting on there. Stamp it on, let it radiate out into that watercolour there. The watercolour is still wet. So what I will do is just grab another soft brush and just Flick that in, if you want, just to fix your edges up. Just to fix that up to give it more bullshit appeal. I've got me red gold and the white. I'm going to put some water there and I want to sparkle up that. So I'm going to get me toothbrush into the water and start pulling it into some white first. Okay, see what I've done there? Don't just put this into the paint. You need flickable wet paint and you need it on the tips of your toothbrush not all the way in careful not to get this on the sky and we'll probably get some control it there we go I'm controlling it with very little flicks for now and then this will make the um, orange flicks stand out over this white so so you get this the right consistency from your palette into the toothbrush and you can do some magic with this flicking and we just get it to about there I'm just going to wipe that on a cloth and do the same with the red gold in the water and start pulling that into the tip of me toothbrush and we'll finish that shimmer off with our red gold now if you've done this shimmer and you think you've buggered it up, just grab your soft brush and waterfly it back into the water. And this stands out a lot more because of the white underneath it. I'll show you what I mean with this big brush here. Just something nice and soft and then just pull it right across the painting. Bang. Bang. See, and that's waterfied, the sun's motion on the water. Now before we put the foreground in, if you want to go an extra step, what I'm going to show you here, detail some of that water. I'm just grabbing the burn umber on its own, just on a flat, pretty much down here. See these lines I've got? I can continue, make sure these are straight lines. Very little. Now they're starting to bow down, so I'm going to train my brush back onto the palette to get it a bit straight. And you want some of this just rippling through that as well and just gingerly don't put too much of this just in the reflecting in the shimmer there but you want to kind of join it what I mean by join it is come from it and bring that band that you want that dark band within your water here somewhere take advantage of those dark spots and this is just adding more ripples, swell, movement in your water. Just had to re-tape it on there, it was falling off. Now we're going to put the foreground in. Now see our shimmer here? We want to sort of come around that and over here lightly. 
and I'm just going to use some simple basic colors. I'm going to do the solid bits first then air it out. So I've just got black and the burnt umber. Choose what brush is going to work for you. But first I've got a medium fan brush. I'm going to, I want some of this mixed with black, the darkest color, which is a black burnt umber color. And I'll gradually lighten this up when I pull it out into the, to the orange color. But this is pretty much going to be dark here. So I'm going to just use this to stamp it on and I want to find my window which is where I want this to be opened okay so I want it nice and light about there at the bottom somewhere just like that I'm moving it around so I'm not getting see see how you got these stamping marks I don't want that so what I'm trying to do to get rid of that is turn it around let it be scratchy and airy and I want this to come all the way up to about here with the solidness look at it sitting in front of that orange all this inside will be solid till about there. Now you, like I said, you use what brush is gonna work for you. I just picked this up because I thought I can twist it around and do it quick on the camera. Let's bring this a little bit more up here. Way up the top there, bring it right up because it's right in the foreground. And then you wanna gradually get it darker towards the, say where the tape is on my canvas. So we've got all those airy bits out there. I've, that's why I use this brush. I was able to just quickly get these airy bits happening. But all this bit here now, I want quite solid. I want something here. I don't want nothing there. I want something there, but I want it a bit airy. So I'm just going to carry on about there somewhere. And then I'll come up this side. I want some real scratchy bits coming there. right up over stop that about there a lot of air in between here meaning i'm going to leave windows you'll see why that's just not going to the one thing we all done when we're learning is do big blobs of solid trees over a beautiful background and you can't see no realism or life within the back of it so i'm trying to teach you not to do that in this painting so let me solid this up now and just what I'm trying to do with this fan brush is get some, see what I've done one there, just trying to get some kind of more deliberate lines like that before I start using my liner brush. Just something in there like so, right in front of that shimmer there. Something probably coming up here. Just little stringy bits. And I'll show you how these can look great. Over here as well, look, we're gonna have some nice stringy bits coming off out of here. Chiseling up the fan brush as I load it, right up there. And this is such an easy painting, but it's one of those paintings when it's hanging on the wall, it has that uh, appeal where if you're someone sitting at your dinner table having dinner and they're talking to you and they're looking around and they see this art on the wall, it's gonna kind of give them that vibe of like, Wow, what a beautiful piece of art. It's gonna have that vibe lingering within it. And so what I wanna try and show you beginners today, what you can do. And some stringy bits up here. Practice this procedure doing this sort of tree here with this fan brush, okay? And you can see what those stringy bits have done they're kind of sunken all that back and added quite a bit of, um, let's do a little bit up here, quite a bit of bullshit appeal. BA, we'll call it BA, bullshit appeal. Now, don't ask me what sort of tree this is because I just simply don't know. It's just a fan brush tree. I'm just kind of detailing a little bit more. Some of them can crisscross over from there. Now I'm grabbing my deer foot. I've just put a little bit of water with that paint because I want to get some more deliberate stuff like this here and there, just coming off it if I can without destroying the look that I've got now because the way it's looking now, I'm quite happy with it. And if there's anything down here that you feel is a bit too shy on depth, just block it in as well. Yeah, so down, 
down here in front there I wouldn't mind something just kind of growing off this stamping it on just something like that lots of little ones flicking off there I've got my little liner brush and I've put a bit of water in that tone the value that color there rolling it onto the fan brush the liner brush sorry and I'd want to just detail these now so get like nice sharp values of this just sort of nice and hairy and airy this one's a bit thick for my liking so I'll try and fix that up and I'll get some more bits coming off it and I'm gonna to have to solid it there and join it to the tree now see how this lines breaking up as I'm using it on my liner brush stop what you're doing don't hope for the best that it's going to work you got to make it work I've just added more water to that paint now let's see if we can get you watch this it's gonna it's not gonna fade away now where was I up to I was up to there look at it I stopped I added more water to it but not enough where it's going to be real see-through and all I'm doing now is detailing the ends of these little sticky bits just with um, my liner brush just to get it like more razzle dazzle them some branches cross them over whatever and play with it just keep do a bit take a step back and have a look at it and see how your vibes working for you and that's all it takes okay I just got a lighter value now with that liner brush and I'm just going to autograph them in my painting here and I want to thank all my patrons to support my content every month if you're not a patron and want to become a patron hit the link below become a patron and I want to thank everybody who likes and comments on my art if you want to ask me a question just simply comment below now let's whack a frame on this and see how she looks there we go that's not too shabby we've got a sun setting misty glary lake swamp scene and that looks quite arty in the frame don't you think something I know you can do well what a simple and effective beautiful piece of art that you can have fun learning along with my video here be sure to hit the thumbs up share like and subscribe and like i said comment below if you want to ask me anything and be sure to tell your friends if you like what you see on my channel but if you don't like what i'm doing you tell everybody goodbye good luck and good on you